guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Dead Laughing and I'm here with a different kind of video today. So today I'm going to be talking about some books that are set in Ireland or are about Irish people but were not written by Irish authors. Um, and I have a lot of feelings, I go into these kind of books um, with a lot of mixed feelings and a lot of fears that Irish people and Irish cultures are not going to be portrayed well. Um, on the pages of these books. I guess like anyone else who knows someone who is not, has not grown up in their country or within their culture, um, how, like I think it's a fear that anyone would have. Um, but so I'm just going to I'm just going to talk about a few books that I really really loved and a few books that I really really hated um, so I have kind of both ends of the spectrum here. So I will start with some of the books that I loved. One of the ones I really really loved was The Stolen Child by Lisa Carey. This is a book about a woman who it's based around kind of a few different women. One of these, one woman lives on this very remote island where there's only very, very few people live anymore um, and they're kind of being threatened with eventually they will have to move to the mainland of Ireland because there's just not enough kind of jobs or there's not enough, um, there's not enough people really left on this island for there to be a thriving community. This a lady from America um, arrives on the island and she is like a distant relative of a man who used to live on this island um, and he died recently and she moves into his cottage and she kind of becomes friends with some of the community and they soon find that she is there because um, I think it's St. Bridget. Um, St. Bridget was rumoured to have lived on this island and there's supposed to be this well somewhere on this island where there's like almost this blessed water um, and it can kind of grant you um, fertility. Um, and this woman really, really, really wants a child. So she is hoping that through this she will be able to... Um, conceive a child and get a child of her own. So the two women who are Irish in this are Rose and Emer and they are sisters. I think they might actually be twins but I can't remember. Um, and then the American woman, her name is Bridget as well. Um, and we kind of just see this this kind of weird friendship they have. Emer is a little bit more wary of Bridget where Rose is quite welcoming. Emer has not had a very good life where Rose is very kind of joyful and has a lot of children. Emer only has one child who she is always scared of that he will be taken away by the fairies. She is like these this these fear of changing children and um you see this kind of this old Irish fear of the the strange folk. Um and I just feel like it's all played in really, really well. Um, and I know afterwards when I was uh, read this book um, and I kind of looked up more about Lisa Carey that she had spent time on similar islands in Ireland um, and then she'd spent time with the people and spent time with the community. So she knew what she was writing about and I felt like she just wrote it in a really, really great way. Um, and another person who wrote Irish people and old Irish communities really, really well was Hannah Kent in The Good People. And The Good People is based around this woman whose husband has died and they were caring for their grandson called Michal um, and Michal was once a very kind of bonny child. He was healthy, he was talking, he was happy and then shortly after the death of his mother it appears that he just turned, something happened to him and he became very physically disabled, mentally disabled, can't talk anymore, you know, can't even go to the toilet by himself, can't walk um, and he is very hard to look after um, and the her his grandmother is convinced that he is maybe a changeling child as well so there is this theme of changeling children um, you see quite a lot actually in old Irish stories um, this thing of changeling children and the fear of changeling children um, and then there's this other old lady who is kind of a wise woman, a woman who people think she knows more about the fairy ways and she knows more of like old recipes and um, she is not really with the church um, and we see how things are starting to change into people kind of respecting these old ways and these old traditions um, and basically the Catholic Church kind of coming in more into these more rural areas and basically doing away with these kind of traditions and these these beliefs while people can be like a lot of people are like obviously Catholic but they still believe in the fairies and are respectful of the fairies and um, we see the way these new priests kind of come in and try and push that away um, and it was just a really really interesting look at everything and I just felt like the way people like the way everything is told in this I felt was just so authentic and I just really really felt like felt like it was Ireland it was the Ireland that I knew it was an Ireland of the past that I knew and um, I don't think a lot of it was like really really over the top or anything I do feel like a lot of this kind of things would have happened this is how people would have believed how people would have acted 
um, and I really really enjoyed this book. I loved the writing in it, it was so atmospheric um, and I really 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 enjoyed it. The book I want to talk about is The Trip of a Lifetime by Monica McInerney and this is um, a kind of a spin-off book to Monica McInerney, McInerney's The Alphabet Sisters which is based in Australia but these sisters have an Irish granny and in The Trip of a Lifetime they basically, one of them goes on a trip back to Ireland um, with their granny and she is facing up with a lot of things that she left behind when she was younger when she first left Ireland for Australia um, and we're seeing her have to um, confront a lot of memories, a very a lot of tough memories. Um, and there is a little bit of it in Ireland and where they're exploring Ireland and they're meeting some Irish people which is great but I think one of the best things about this book is um, the granny herself. Her name is Lola and she is just like she's very eccentric and very kind of out there like in terms of like an elderly lady but at the same time there's just something so quintessentially Irish about her just the way she like embraces life and talks to people and talks to anyone like she would like probably talk to a tree if I talk back to her like I think a lot of Irish people tend to be like that we just love to talk um so yeah uh, she was just so so Irish I just love this the better and Monica McInerney like she is Australian but she has spent a lot of time in Ireland she has lived in Ireland um I'm presuming by her name she probably has a lot of Irish um background a lot of Irish family members um so yeah I just really really love this and another one I want to talk about is one that I actually it's been a long time since I read it so I don't really remember like a lot about the story but I do remember really really enjoying the story and it's Secrets of the Lighthouse by Santa Montefiore and um, Santa Montefiore is an author I really really enjoy and she tends to write books like set in lots of different places um and this one is obviously I think I'm pretty sure it's set in Galway like near Connemara um, and it's about a woman who's kind of basically running away from something and she ends up in this kind of coastal area um, and she meets this man who is a widower and um, she kind of ends up like coming into his life and they kind of start falling in love and stuff like that but um, and there's all these secrets I think he like owns this like castle or something that they don't live in because it's like kind of haunted and um they kind of she starts learning a little bit more about his past and his wife and what happened to them and um yeah I just really really enjoyed this I just loved I think the scenery in this was beautiful from what I remember um and all I remember is really that I read it and I didn't hate it considering it was you know an Irish book written by a non-Irish author so um yeah I do would recommend people to read this and I do actually want to read a lot more of Santa's books because she is a beautiful writer and a lot of the books that I have read of hers I've really really enjoyed. It's four books I loved and now I'm going to go into the four books I hated and this might get a little bit ranty um so if you don't like that probably look away now but the first book that I am going to talk about is probably one of my most hated books of all time that is set in Ireland and that is the Dark Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning um, and I've talked a lot about like my feelings about this author and this, these books before in the past and um, when I first read these books I had it was like my first year at booktube I'd gone into the hype I had convinced myself I was going to love them so I think I gave them a four stars and then I read the second one and I was like hmm I don't think I actually like this as much as I thought I did and I think I gave that one a three stars and then I got to the the third one which was the last book I read I think and I gave that like a one or two five two stars or something like that and I started really thinking about the writing in the books and how some characters were portrayed and how Ireland was portrayed and I realised that I despised the books and I dropped them all down to like a one star rating because um, the more I thought about it the more angry I got. Um, I just feel like Ireland isn't portrayed very well in these books. I think our culture um, and our stories, our fae stories, our mythology, um, our old folk tales, all that kind of stuff. I think they're used in these books to make a good story. Yet Ireland itself isn't portrayed very well. The Irish people are never portrayed very well. We're all portrayed like very um, negatively and bitter and sometimes even stupid. Like um, a lot of the main characters in in the books aren't even Irish. And um, the main character is American. And um, one of the other guys is I don't even know. I don't know whether Jericho Barons is Irish. He never really appeared Irish. I don't think he ever really said whether he's Irish or not, or maybe like Anglo Irish or something. I'm not really sure. Um, but yeah like I just hate these books so much there's not enough like <laughs> there's not a lot of um it's a very Americanized view of Ireland an Americanized view of Dublin in particular which drives me insane um to be quite honest um there is a policeman in this who is looking his friend died or something like that or his brother-in-law died and his name is Patrick his brother-in-law's name was Patrick and he's looking for this and he's blaming the main character for something that happened to this guy and he keeps calling his brother who's called Patrick Patty 
And if there's one thing that anyone can do, if you want an instant punch in the face by an Irish person, is to call a man called Patrick Patty or say St. Patty's Day because we hate it. Um, it literally turns us into like a rage. Like if you want an, any Irish person to go from Bruce Banner to the Incredible Hulk, say happy St. Patty's Day because we like we're gone like we have turned into a big green rage fueled monster it's so annoying it's disrespectful it's not patty is short for patricia not patrick paddy with the d's that's short for patrick but no we never say like we sometimes would say pat but not very rarely normally it's always it's patrick is always put into paddy not patty and yeah so rant over about that but just the fact that, that that was put into this book goes to show that this author knows nothing about Ireland and nothing about Irish people again just using our culture and using our um our link to the fae people and to the fae stories just to make a good book well what she thinks is a good book but it's not actually a good book also a lot of the um the scenes are all done in like Temple Bar and uh Temple Bar is like the tourist section of uh of Dublin not a lot of actual like Irish people would be in and about Temple Bar every day unless they work in the area um yeah we wouldn't like hang out in Temple Bar because it's like a tourist trap everything is more expensive over there so we would never really ever be in Temple Bar unless we're bringing like people who are visiting there. The other book I want to talk about is The Blind Astronomer's Daughter by John Pipkin and um, this is a book a historical book set in the late 18th century and it is about a woman who is English so her father owned some land um, in Ireland because um, it's obviously the time when Britain trolled Ireland and um, so she is she is English she has grown up a little bit in Ireland and there's this whole story about her father trying to build some telescope to look at the stars or whatever um, which was really boring I didn't really like the book for that anyway but then there was this character called Finn who this daughter I think her name was Caroline falls in love with um, and this guy called Finn was one of the um was one of the renters of this land um and he was the blacksmith's son and he was just really really like unpatriotic he didn't care about any Irish revolutions any Irish rebellion against the British which was just really really odd like very odd particularly for someone who is of the lower class um of Irish people back then a lot of them would have been very up against the Brits because they were treated so badly a lot of the talks about the rebels who I guess what I would call the Fenians um were they just were never described very well they were described as very violent very horrible people all the time um and I just didn't like this I just felt like there was this really weird like pro-British anti-Irish like thing going across with this book and I was just like nah like no no like I was I just wasn't there for it because you know no uh yeah so I just thought like I don't know if that was just me or if another Irish person if they read this book would see that though I wouldn't recommend for anyone to read the book because it was really boring anyway even without all of that um so yeah so the next books I want to talk about are the Molly Murphy mystery series um, by Reese Bowen. Now the books themselves are actually written really really well and I really enjoy them but I've listened to the majority of them bar one um, so far on audiobook and the first three audiobooks were narrated by an Irish actress called Lara Hutchinson and she did really really well. Obviously she's Irish, she knows how to do Irish accents because this book series follows an Irish girl um, who has emigrated to New York and she becomes a private detective and this is in like the early uh, 20th century so she is um, you know as a woman being a private de detective she comes up with up against a lot of issues and a lot of um, obstacles so it's a, quite a fun read um, and all just like the trouble that she always gets herself into and the cases that she she tries to um, uncover and it is a really really fun uh, series but then in the fourth book which was in like Flynn um, the narrator changed to an English actress called Nicola Barber and after like the first book I did get used to Nicola Barber's voice so the rest of them weren't as much of an issue for me but um, in, in like Flynn in particular when I was had gotten used to Lara Hutchinson's voice as Molly and she suddenly became Nicola Barber I was just like I was really I felt really like disconnected from the story all of a sudden because obviously Nicola was not able to do an Irish accent as well and um, she wasn't able to do a particular Irish accent like she seemed to like 
Molly suddenly seemed to be from like every single part of Ireland at the same time like sometimes she had like a Northern Irish accent sometimes she sounded like she had a Cork or a Kerry accent or a Sligo accent um, and it was just really really odd to read like as an Irish person I was like I could tell that it was wrong and um, where other people probably wouldn't have been able to pick up on that but I was but one of my main issues with this book was at one point there was this character who's just a side character isn't that much of an important character and her name is Nula and she has this very like strange spelling name like a lot of Irish names like hello Aoife uh, I'm well used to you know weird sounding names um, and weird spelling names so yeah so Nula is spelt N-U-A-L-A -A, um, and Nicola Barber had obviously never come across this name before didn't think that oh well this is about an Irish Irish girl this is an Irish character maybe I should look up how to say this name before I do it on the audiobook she didn't seem to care about that whoever was editing it didn't seem to care about that so she called her Nuala for the book which just sounds ridiculous like no um, and it just really really irked me that this like that this wasn't like done properly and the last book I want to talk about is probably another one that will get me into a bit of a rant because it is about a subject that is a very very bad point in Irish history and it's a very sore point particularly for Irish women and it is The Magdalene Girls by V.S. Alexander and this is a book about a girl who becomes I don't know if this girl herself becomes pregnant or I think she is just um she's just been a little bit flirty with guys or something and she's brought into the Magdalene one of the Magdalene laundries in Dublin and um she goes into these this convent which is they're like mother and baby homes um and best way I can explain them is basically Ireland has a very tenuous relationship with its women and our ownership of our own bodies and um, we still don't own our own bodies we still to this day do not have body autonomy which is why we're currently trying to um we're trying to repeal the eighth which is um something in our constitution um that basically makes abortion illegal in Ireland and um, we can still go to jail if we try a home abortion in Ireland we can still be prosecuted for it to this day um like as if it's like the 18th century or something so yeah so this is kind of tied into this a little bit where years ago not that long ago to be honest like not that long ago um there used to be these mother and baby homes a lot of them were called Magdalene laundries because they were run by this um particular uh, section of nuns called the Magdalene sisters and basically women who were pregnant were brought to these homes basically their entire lives were signed away by their local priest or their um, their father or their mother um, and they were put into these laundries they had their baby their baby was taken away from them and a lot of them never left those laundries for the rest of their lives they were basically treated as slaves they were abused they were um, assaulted they were treated like slaves basically and it's disgusting and we are still learning about the effects of these Magdalene laundries up to date these mother and baby homes um, up to the point where uh, very recently within the last few years we found a um, there's a, a place called the Tomb Baby Home and uh, we found a grave of baby skeletons um, that had been left in this sewage pit and um, these babies had died under the care of these sisters uh, and they had never been treated properly their like their bodies had never been treated properly they had just been tossed into this into this like, kind of mass grave and eventually years later wherever this grave was was put near a sewage tank and yeah that kind of happened um so i will leave if anyone is interested in this kind of history um and what happened i will leave links down below so you know a little bit more and um, if you do want to know a little bit more but basically this is what this book was about was this magdalene home and i really didn't like how the nuns were made in this book because these ba these mother and baby homes were disgusting places overall it wasn't just that one place in particular was bad all of them were bad all of them treated pe with these women really really badly um we were all treated like criminals and I don't know like in this book there was like this whole storyline done about the 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 head nun in this particular place and how she was kind of given this weird like excuse for her behavior and how something had happened to like her sister or something had had a baby and had like something had happened to her um to make the sister like kind of like she, like to be fair she wasn't mentally like stable this sister and um, but we were given all this like background information about why she kind of acted the way she did and I was just sitting there being like 
but no, like, I mean, this isn't, like, what, what about all the others? What about the priests who came in and raped the girls? What about the, um, the nuns who abused them, who beat them, who treated them badly? The, the, the nuns who ripped the children out of these women's, like, arms as soon as they were born. What about all of them? The ones who locked the doors and never let them leave. The ones that institutionalised them. And, you know, they, they literally couldn't leave. Even when they the doors were open a lot of these women had to live in these places for the rest of their lives because they were so institutionalized they couldn't leave they didn't know how to live outside of these places and um, because they were in there for so long and I just felt like I just didn't like it I was just like no because these women didn't have an excuse these people these religious orders didn't have any excuse on how they treated these women like there was no excuse there's no reason why these women were treated so badly why they were treated so inhumanely um, and I felt like this book tried to give that excuse and I just wasn't buying it and it just really really annoyed me and again this is a very um strained piece of Irish history this is a very this is a very dark stain on our history on on, on our modern history as I said I just didn't like the excuses that were given for this nun and for her actions because what about every single other one of them what about all those priests all those all those what are they called? Well, they're superiors that treated all these people badly. Now, I'm not saying every single one of them was bad. There are probably some nice nuns in there, but overall, nope, they weren't nice. They weren't nice people, and I'm just not going to buy any book that tries to give them excuses for their behaviour. Um, so yeah, I just didn't really, really like that. And I will say, this was written by a man, and it was written by an American man, and yeah, I just, I don't know if that maybe went into a little bit of it, that he couldn't quite understand a lot of the feelings um, around this issue. I don't know, um, as a woman, obviously as an Irish woman, a woman who still doesn't have bodily autonomy in her own country, I feel very passionate about this kind of thing um, and about how like a woman like me could have been treated like if I'd gotten myself into trouble, if I'd been living a hundred years earlier and I'd gotten myself into trouble, if I'd gotten pregnant, I would have been shut up into one of these homes very, very easily. Just my dad just had to sign a piece of paper and I, my whole life would have been signed away basically because I happened to get pregnant. So yeah, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a tough subject to talk about, but um, yeah, I just, it is a really, really tough bit of history and I didn't really like how it was portrayed in this book. So please let me know what you guys think about Hope. I didn't get too ranty for you guys because I think I did but yeah we will see. Um, leave any thoughts down below because I would love to know. Let me know if there's any books from your country that you think have been written badly by authors not from your country because I would love to know if people have found similar issues um, as well. Um, I yeah I just want to know all about it. Thank you guys so much so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next time.